Welcome to this video on projectile motion. So first of all, let's look at what projectile motion really is. Projectiles are objects in free flight. That means there's no forces on them apart from gravity. So in this video, we're going to look at three key ideas about understanding what projectile motion is and how you can use these key ideas to answer your exam questions. Now the first important idea is that gravity is the only force acting on a projectile motion. If there are any forces apart from gravity, it's not projectile motion and don't answer it in this way. So let's look at a few different things. A soccer ball could be flying through the air. A plane could be flying through the air. Or even a piece of toast could be falling off your plate. Now a soccer ball flying through the air would be in projectile motion because gravity would be the only force acting. As soon as it leaves your foot, there are no other forces acting apart from gravity. Now for this whole topic, we're going to be ignoring air resistance. The same with a piece of toast. As soon as it's left your plate, it's free falling straight down towards the ground. There are no forces acting on it apart from gravity. A plane, on the other hand, does have gravity acting on it as it's up in the air, but it also has thrust as it pushes forwards, and it also has lift from the wings pulling it upwards. Therefore, a soccer ball and toast would be projectile motion because gravity is the only force acting, but a plane would not be projectile motion because that has other forces acting. Now let's look at another key idea with projectile motions. Another key idea is that we always need to treat the horizontal part of movement and the vertical part of movement completely separately. So if we know that a soccer was flying up on an angle, there's part of it which is going straight up into the air because it is actually moving upwards, but there's also a part of it moving acrosswards because it is moving a horizontal distance as well. Now remember, Gravity is going to be the only force acting, and gravity is always working downwards. And that's why we're going to split the soccer ball's motion into vertical motion and horizontal motion. Because we've essentially split it up into, ah, oh, where's the motion where gravity is occurring, and where's the motion where no gravity is occurring. And if we combine this with the first idea that gravity is the only force acting, we can see that there's only forces acting in the vertical because that's the only direction that gravity ever acts in, is vertically. And we can also know that any horizontal movement that the ball or anything else might have has no forces acting because there's no gravity. And remember, gravity is the only force acting. So let's see how we would apply this in a question. Now that we know gravity is the only force acting, and we know we're going to have to treat horizontal and vertical vectors separately because there's a gravity and a no gravity difference, then let's see how we'll answer a question. We might be shown that a soccer ball is flying up at 10 meters per second on this angle of 30 degrees. Now remember, we need to treat the horizontal component and the vertical component of this 10 meters per second separately. But how do we actually work out these vertical or horizontal movements? Well, we have to use trigonometry. We know one side of a right angle triangle, we know an angle, so we can work out that this vertical component of the velocity must be 10 sine 30. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll find out that the ball is raising upwards at 5 meters per second the instant after it was kicked. Okay, so now how do we work out the horizontal component of this movement as well? Well, we do the same thing. We use trigonometry. And this will be 10 cos 30. And if you put that into your calculator, you'll find out that it's moving horizontally at 8.66 meters per second. Now that we know these two parts, we've actually calculated the vertical and the horizontal components of the velocity separately. And this is going to be an essential first step for you in almost all problems. And if it's not the first step, it'll be coming later on. So hopefully you understand that this angle 10 meters per second is made up of a vertical part of 5 meters per second and a horizontal part of 8.66 meters per second. So how would this become a question? Well, it might be something like Jimmy kicks a ball at 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. And how far will it go? And when they say how far will it go, I'm meaning what is the horizontal range, what's the horizontal distance that the ball will be kicked? So before we answer this one, I want to introduce the third and final key idea that you need to take away from this video. That is that acceleration is always 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. And that's because of gravity. If you ever drop two things, they will always accelerate at the same speed down towards the ground. And this acceleration is always given to you on your formula sheet. And this is really important because we're going to use it with all our vertical movements. Because remember, acceleration because of gravity is always going to be downwards.
So in the previous diagram, we looked at this very, very same example with 10 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. And remember, we broke them up into the vertical and the horizontal components of the movement. So now we want to treat the horizontal and the vertical parts of the movement completely, completely separately. Because really, there's forces acting in the vertical, and hopefully you remember that that force is going to be from gravity, and there's no forces acting in the horizontal, because there's no gravity acting. So instead of going back to that diagram, I'm going to walk you through tables and some formulas showing you how you'd actually find an answer to this question, based on what we know already. So let's look at what we want to know. We want to know how far will this ball go horizontally. So that's going to be in the horizontal column of this table. That's a distance. We want to know how far it's going to go. Now, in order to find a distance, the most common distance equation is just distance equals velocity multiplied by time. So if we want to know a distance, we have to know a velocity, how fast it's moving horizontally, and we have to know a time. Now, if you remember from the previous diagram, we calculated the horizontal component of that triangle being 8.66 meters per second. Now, if we're trying to find a horizontal distance, we have to use a horizontal velocity, but time, on the other hand, that doesn't have a direction. It's not a vector. So time can just be time. So using our horizontal velocity, we still need to know what the time is before we can work out this horizontal distance. Now, there's one more equation we're going to have to need. And in order to find out which equation that is, we have to list everything else that we know. Now, we've basically found all we can horizontally. So we're going to flick over to the vertical information now and list everything we know about the vertical movement of the soccer ball. Now, to start with, we know it was initially kicked upwards at 5 meters per second. Now remember, because gravity is acting, the ball's upward movement is going to slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. And then when it gets to the very, very, very peak of its movement, it's essentially going to stop all vertical movement before it starts heading back down again. So therefore, at the very peak of its movement, it has a final velocity of zero. Because if it's going upwards, it has to momentarily stop before it starts changing direction and going back down again. So that's why we have a final velocity of zero meters per second. And you can use this in every type of projectile motion question when you're talking about vertical movement. The other thing we know is this key idea three, that there is always an acceleration at 9.8 meters per second downwards. Now the reason I put a negative here is because initially the ball was going upwards, but it's accelerating downwards because of gravity. Therefore, because it's the opposite direction, I just have to make one of them a negative. Doesn't matter which one. And finally, I want to find time. So these top three things, they're the things that I know about vertical movement, and the time is what I want to find. And I want to find time because if I know time, I can work out my horizontal distance. And that is what the question is asking me. So let's try and use all of this information here and see if there is a formula with VI, the initial velocity, VF, the final velocity, remember this is all just vertical velocities, the acceleration, and a time. So just to make it hopefully make a little bit more sense, let's make it diagrammatical. So here's the diagram, here's the ball flying through the air, and the shape is actually in a parabola. So if they ever ask you what the shape is of its movement, don't say a semicircle, say a parabola. And that's quite a nice word to be able to drop in when you're explaining projectile motion movement as well. So here we've got the information we need. Now if you look on your formula sheet for the formula with all of these four things in it, you'll come up with VF equals VI plus AT. Now remember, we're looking for a final velocity up the top here where it's got zero vertical movement, and we're starting at the bottom on the left-hand side here where it's going upwards at 5 meters per second. So plugging in the numbers that we know, we have a final velocity of zero, an initial velocity of 5, an acceleration of negative 9.8, that's why we've got a minus here instead of a plus, and that's multiplied by the time, what we're trying to find. If we rearrange this formula, we then end up with a time as being 5 divided by 9.8. And that gives us a time of 0.51 seconds if you put that into your calculator. Great, so we've got a time now. But just before we move on, remember the time we've found is the time when it was initially going upwards at 5 meters per second, and then it reached the top and it was perfectly still before it started coming back down. So actually this time of 0.51 seconds is it going up to the top. But because it's perfectly symmetrical in a parabola, we know that the time coming down will always be exactly the same. So that's going to be 0.51 seconds as well. So the total time is going to be 1.02 seconds when we add these two together. Great, so now we know the time. So we can actually flick back to this table. We worked out what the time was. It was 1.02 seconds. 
So the horizontal time is going to be the same because it's just the time the ball was in the air. Time doesn't have a horizontal or vertical distance. And time is always going to be the thing that links the vertical and the horizontal together. So now that we know the time, we can put it into our formula. Distance equals velocity times time. Putting that in, we knew our horizontal velocity of 8.66 meters per second. So 8.66 meters per second for 1.02 seconds. That gives us a final distance of 8.8332 meters that it's going to travel horizontally. Or if we want to round that correctly, it's 8.8 .8 meters horizontally to two significant figures. And there's our answer. I realize this is quite a complicated calculation and this is an excellence level problem. But hopefully you can see the three ideas coming through. The first idea, gravity is the only force acting. And that means that horizontally, this distance is always going to be the same. Next, we have to split up the horizontal and vertical components. Once we list what we know horizontally, if that's what we're trying to find ultimately, we then have to go and list what we know vertically. Potentially this time it was to find the time. And once we do that, calculate the time, we can go back and find our horizontal answer. Now, although it might seem like a whole lot of steps, these steps that we've just been through, these exact steps and the exact formulas, are very typical of NCEA-style questions. It's either going to be a question just like this, or it's going to be a question which we'll go through in the next example. But let's look at what you need to take out of the video so far. What you need to know is that gravity is the only force acting, and that we always need to treat horizontal and vertical components separately. And the reason we treat them separately is because gravity is the only force acting and that acts vertically. So it gets a bit confusing when we're talking about angles unless we split them up. So split them up so that vertical is acting and if the vertical is acting, it will always have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And that leaves the horizontal component to be untouched by any type of force or acceleration. So they're the three key ideas. Now, you're always going to be choosing from this group of formulas here, these kinematic equations. And typically, you're going to be dealing with this first formula, like we just saw in the previous example. You'll need to be finding a time if they ask you for a horizontal distance. So this first formula is appropriate. Alternatively, though, if you list everything you need to know, there'll be one thing you don't know and you have to find, three things that you do know, so you'll be able to pick one of these four formulas. And we'll see how the other formula, it's going to be this one up the top here, is going to apply in the other situation, the other main type of question you're going to get. But hopefully you understand these formula and how we can apply them. So let's look at another question now. In this question, Jordan throws a basketball, this is the basketball up the top here, with an initial horizontal velocity of 7.8 meters per second. And he's at a height of 1.4 meters off the floor. Now the question asks us to calculate the velocity, which means the magnitude and direction. Magnitude is how fast it's going, direction is what direction is it pointing in, of the ball just before it hits the floor. So looking at the diagram, now we got told that the horizontal velocity is 7.8 meters per second. It said that in the question. We also know that we have to find the final velocity just before this basketball hits the floor. So let's look at what we know. Remember, if we're trying to find a final velocity here, that's going to be made up of what? Vertical and horizontal components. That's your key first step for almost every question. So let's work backwards from the answer. In the last answer, we needed to find a horizontal distance, and we worked backwards to realize, ah, oh, in order to find that, we need a time. In this type of question, which is the other type of question you could get, you have a final velocity. Now, in order to find a final velocity that's on an angle, we need to find the final velocity that's vertical and the final velocity that's horizontal. If we find those two, we get to work out what the overall final velocity is. So let's see what we can do with that. Now, we already know that this horizontal velocity is not going to change at all. And the reason we know that is because horizontal velocities have no forces acting because there's no gravity. And therefore, if there's no forces, it's never going to change speed. So horizontal velocities are always constant. So we could put in our horizontal velocity final as 7.8 meters per second as well. Now we need to find the final vertical velocity. But how are we going to do that? So let's look at everything we know so far. If we want to find the final vertical velocity, we need to figure out what other vertical aspects we know. Because remember, we're going to treat vertical and horizontal separately. So listing everything else we know vertically, Initially, just when this basketball leaves Jordan's hands, there's no vertical movement. 
It's going across, sure, but it hasn't started falling down yet, just at the instant when he lets it go. We know as soon as he does let it go, it's going to start falling downwards, but to start with, there's a zero vertical velocity. Now also remember, we have an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. You'll notice this time that the acceleration doesn't have a negative in front of it. This is because a negative represents direction. Now we're only talking about a direction from the top of where the basketball starts going downwards to the floor. The acceleration also is acting downwards because gravity always pushes things downwards towards the floor and therefore the direction is the same. So we don't need any negative here. And we know the vertical distance. Vertically, the basketball falls 1.4 meters. So here's listing everything we need to know and you'll notice again that we have something we need to find, one thing we need to find, and you have three things that you already know. So we need to find a formula with V vertical, now that's the final vertical velocity, so V final, the initial, acceleration, and distance. And if you hunt around on your formula sheet, you'll find this formula that has Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2 times acceleration times the distance. Now plugging all the numbers in that we know, we have 0 squared for our initial velocity, we have 2 multiplied by the acceleration, which is 9.8, multiplied by the distance, which is 1.4 meters, and that's going to give us our final velocity squared. Now, when you put this into your calculator, you're going to get a really big number. You need to square root this big number to get Vf, because we don't want to know what Vf squared is, we just want to know what V final is. And if you square root that answer, you'll get your final vertical velocity as being 5.23 meters per second. So now we can put this back on our triangle. So we've nearly got our answer now. Now we know that there's a vertical velocity of 5.23 meters per second. We remember that our horizontal velocity has not changed and it's still 7.8 meters per second. But just before we go on to find a final magnitude, remember, we need to find the magnitude, the size of this arrow, this final velocity. We also need to find the direction, which means we need to find an angle at some stage as well. So that we can describe not only the final velocity is this big, but this is the angle it hits the ground at. So we'll find this after we get this final velocity. But to get this final velocity, we're going to need to use Pythagoras. Pythagoras is the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we put 5.23 squared plus 7.8 squared, we're going to get our final velocity squared. Putting that into your calculator and remember to square root because we don't want the final velocity squared, we just want the final velocity. That will give you a Vf at 9.4 meters per second. That's our final velocity. And if we look to find this angle here, we can do the angle as inverse tan, 5.23 divided by 7.8. Putting that into your calculator, that gives us an angle of 34 degrees. So your final answer is going to be, therefore, the basketball lands with a final velocity of 9.4 meters per second at an angle of 34 degrees above the horizontal. And that's how you do that. So remember, split your vector up into vertical and horizontal components, and that's because gravity acts vertically. Then treat vertical and horizontal separate all of the time. Once you've done that, you can slowly work out your vertical component or your horizontal component. You're going to need to list what you need to know and look for a formula, and then you can find your final answer. Now we've been through the two different types of projectile motion questions, so if you learn these two methods, you're pretty safe for your exam. And both of these are at the excellence level, so don't worry if it seems like a lot of work. It's meant to be. That's what excellence is. So good luck with your projectile motion questions.